So as a miniature wargamer, I want us to get the most out of our model collection. We're constantly adding to it. It's a resource. And when we're done and you say that you're done, next thing you know, there's more miniatures to acquire. And I find that stepping out of the standard missions of your system is a great way to get the most out of this. I'm going to pull from the historical miniatures wargaming playbook, uh, specifically Chain at Command and some of the other World War II, Spanish Civil War type games that I've had the good fortune to play, where there's this idea that, yes, as a commander, tabletop commander of those forces, and as a tabletop commander of your forces, we're going to try and win, but it's more about recreating a specific scenario. We're looking historically, World War II, picking a battle, crafting the forces, and, and really reliving history and asking the question, what if we were there? How would this play out? What decisions would be made? And often these battles, historically, they're not fair. I mean, who, who's going to attack if things are fair? You attack because you're either desperate, and if you're desperate, you generally don't have the advantage, or that you have the advantage. Or maybe there's a little bit of unknown. You think you have the advantage, but you don't. Some discovery. Um, that's exciting. But in order to play that, so you might have a massively uphill battle, and the way the scenario is set up, you know you're going to lose. But the question is, are you going to go down in the virtual history books fighting to the bitter end and capturing some of that glory? That takes a certain type of switch. That takes a certain type of understanding to be able to play that, to be able to let yourself go and realize if you lose, or you're probably going to lose, can you lose having a good time? Um, and likewise, if you have um, the advantage to approach it from that perspective. We often really don't see this in sci-fi or, or modern wargaming because there's this concept of everything needs to be fair. Battle value, battle points, squadron points, power points. How many points do you want to play? And And certainly... Good list building theory. I mean, if we have 150 squadron points and we can build radically different lists, list theory, game theory, understanding the rules, just because it's equal doesn't necessarily mean that the forces are going to be equal. Yes. But I want to encourage you to look at some specifics. And, and I want to kind of share with you um, a game that I played a while ago, but it goes down as as kind of one of my top 10 narrative games that I, I really enjoyed playing. And I can't wait to do it again. This time we're going to do it with the Borg. So I'm a big Star Trek Deep Space Nine fan. Star Trek Attack Wing, I enjoy playing it. I, I tend to focus on the DS9 aspects, um, but we certainly have enough models from the various factions, and we've got the giant Borg cube and, and some other stuff to play on the table. Uh, essentially, it's a clone of X-Wing miniatures, although a couple of little nuances are are um, different, especially in the various waves. And this makes sense as, as a capital type ship, like the Defiant can put out a lot of firepower. But if you, you know, have a Jem'Hadar uh, battlecruiser, the type of firepower that it can put out, you know, if you're used to X-Wing miniatures, some of those ships have massive firepower, but they're, they're smaller craft. These capital ships, they put out a lot of dice. I mean, you can with the correct pilot and upgrade, well, captain and upgrades, you, you could one-shot a ship. So in doing that, when you play big, massive games, um, a, a lot of action is going on. A lot of stuff's getting blown up. Positioning becomes key and movement becomes key and firing arcs become key. We wanted to revisit. In my mind, it's always going to be Terek Noor. Just that's that's where it is. Repelling the Federation invasion, retaking the station to have commerce under the watchful eye of the Dominion. We set up a scenario where um, pulling on the Angels story arc, Deep Space Nine is controlled by the Dominion. You know, we've got Dukat, we've got the Cardassians, we've got Wayun, we've got the Jem Hadar, and Cisco is mounting his assault to retake it. You know, the minefield is dropped. He's retaking it. He's got the Federation. He's got the Klingons. Um, essentially, I took all of my ships, and we took a couple of ships from other collections, put down the Deep Space Nine model, and we're ready to fight. And the scenario was that the shields, through the, the infiltration and the machinations of the Federation, uh, the shields have been compromised on Deep Space Nine. 
and in nine turns, they were going to drop. So we had full shields up, full complement of weapons, damage control for nine turns. Once the shields dropped, um, if we had not reduced the Federation and Klingon forces significantly, then we were going to have to evacuate just like in the series and, and, and get out of there. And Cisco can have his station back. Although I wouldn't leave him the baseball. I'm taking that with me. Absolutely. And I don't know, I'd, I'd like toss it somewhere. But that was the scenario. So we were under um, a, a very, very tight time frame before the station was sabotaged and the shields dropped. We had nine game turns. Now we're talking massive firepower. And I had the firepower of, of the station too that we were going to utilize. But there was a lot of Klingon ships. There was a lot of named pilots. Um, we, we, we had everything. I did manage to kill Worf. Or I should say we did manage to kill Worf. And we send our regards to Jadzia. But playing that out, it was a lot of fun. And, and we knew going in that we were going to have to be hyper-aggressive. We were going to have to take a lot of risks, a lot of upfront risks. It was not going to be hanging back with our ships and, and kind of letting Deep Space Nine take the brunt of it. Like, no, all the guns, well, I should say, uh, you know, the phasers, the disruptors. Uh, we even had some Breen showing up. Everything ready to go, pushing that out. Did the Federation have the advantage? They did. And in the, the series, in the show, they had the advantage there because we were exploring that one specific scenario. It was a lot of fun because we got to quote the movie. We got to play with certain captains. Um, you know, we got to really do all of that rather than, and a lot of my uh, Star Trek attack wing battles are like that, you know, throw up some ships, blow some stuff up, see what happens. But I want to encourage you to really, really explore, to take your model collection, if you're not a historical war gamer, to take your model collection and within that narrative, you know, if we're looking at Warhammer 40K, go back to the Black Library, look at some of those scenarios where, where it was so one-sided and it was so heroic and, and craft, you know, craft something to that regard. I mean, look at some of the Tyranid invasions. You were never going to win, but can you, how many turns can you hold out? How many turns can you hold out? It's a badge of honor immortalizing yourself in the archives, in the holy halls of Terra. Your name inscribed in one of those books that's going to be put on that shelf for eternity and never, never read again. That's, you know, that's exciting. That's not the only way to play. But I think as sci-fi war gamers or, or modern war gamers not looking at historicals, we tend to try and balance everything. We tend to try to make everything fair. We tend to try to have every scenario be equal. And that's important in a competition. That's important as a tournament, in a tournament. But in homebrew play, in narrative play, how can we get the most out of our miniature collection? That's the question. And I'm doing you a massive favor because the more you utilize your miniature collection, the more you can self-justify to get more miniatures because you're utilizing your entire collection. You're putting everything down. You're maxed out. So that's the excuse to hit that button, order more plastic and metal, paint them up, and keep that cycle, keep that cycle going.